Senator Barrasso. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. So on August 19th, President Biden vowed that uh, he would get every American out of Afghanistan before withdrawing U.S. forces. He stated, Americans understand we're going to try and get it done before August 31st. The president went on to say, and if there are American citizens left behind, we're going to stay until we get them out. This Saturday, I attended the funeral services and memorial service for the life of Riley McCollum, one of 13 of those soldiers. He was a U.S. Marine. A thousand people turned out in Wyoming to honor his life, a life he gave at the airport in Kabul. After I'm talking to you. Would you please pay attention? I'm, I'm listening, Senator. I'm looking at my notes on this very issue. And The next day... The president reiterated a point stating, let me be clear, any American who wants to come home will get, we will get you home. Mr. President of the United States, well, he didn't keep his word. On August 30th, the U.S. military evacuation ended with the last five planes leaving Kabul without a single American on board. The Biden administration left hundreds of Americans and thousands of Afghan partners behind enemy lines. The administration seems in deep denial, greatly miscalculating how many U.S. citizens they left behind. One or the other, deep denial or great miscalculation. On September 13th, Secretary Blinken said there were fewer than 200 American citizens in Afghanistan who wanted to leave. Yesterday, Under Secretary of Defense for Policy, Colin Kyle testified before the Senate Armed Services Committee that there were 450 American citizens still in Afghanistan. He said 196 Americans were ready to leave Afghanistan. He also stated that since September 1st, the U.S. government has helped facilitate the departure of 234 U.S. citizens and 144 law permanent residents. I think today you testified to a different number. It, it's been almost two months since the U.S. withdrew from Afghanistan. There are still American citizens trying to get home, to get to safety, still behind enemy lines. With no U.S. presence on the ground, what mechanism are you using to ensure the safe evacuation of Americans that the Biden administration left behind in Afghanistan? Senator Barrasso, we're working every day to try to bring out the Americans who wish to depart. We're working with a couple of airline companies that uh, are willing to go into the Kabul airport uh, to bring people out on, on chartered aircraft. There's not normal commercial air, air, aircraft service right now at the Kabul airport. We have some flights uh, that we expect to go this week to bring out uh, several dozen Americans. Several dozen. When do you believe all Americans who want to leave Afghanistan will be evacuated? So the number, as I said earlier, of people ready to depart is uh, over 200 on the current pace, depending if we continue to have success with these charter flights. I think all of these people who say they are ready to depart will be offered an opportunity to depart in the next couple of weeks. So we have Americans still trapped in Afghanistan. What actions is this administration taking to help secure the safety and the well-being of these American citizens? So we were talking to the Taliban in Doha about their commitment to permit freedom to travel, particularly American citizens. <clears throat> and we're working with, as I said, a couple of airlines who are willing to go into the Kabul airport. They have agents on the ground who are checking the manifest, ensuring that people who are coming onto the planes have the right documents. And it's something our task force, led by Ambassador Beth Jones, is working on hourly. The Taliban has taken over Afghanistan they are a foreign terrorist organization. There is increased insecurity, movement restrictions, threats posed to civilians. Afghanistan is in crisis. No U.S. civilian, diplomat, or military presence in the country other than those being held. The administration wants to continue to provide foreign assistance, including economic support funds to Afghanistan. During his testimony before the House Subcommittee on National Security, the Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Reconstruction stated, quote, a reduced U.S. civilian and military presence in Afghanistan among a deteriorating security environment could create new challenges for conducting effective oversight of U.S.-funded grants, programs, 
and contracts for reconstruction work. So the question is, given the fact that there is now no U.S. diplomatic or military presence in Afghanistan, is there any way to ensure U.S. taxpayer resources will be used appropriately and actually go to the intended recipients? Senator, the primary assistance we're providing in Afghanistan is humanitarian assistance through non-governmental organizations, UN agencies like the World Food Program. All of these organizations have long experience working in challenging environments where there's been civil war. Uh, so we have confidence in that system, but if we see anomalies or money seeping off to the Taliban, we will, we will stop the programs. We have a statutory provision you've given us that says no funding to the Taliban. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, before I recognize